Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with a really rather underused car, the Cadillac CTSV Coupe. I can't say I've ever personally driven it on this game and I can't say I've ever seen one driven very often at all. So we're going to give it a go and see how it will fare. I liked the, the, the CTSV saloon car. I think it was on was a four? I think the saloon was on. Um, yeah, I do like the saloon car. Never really driven the uh, coupe version. So, yeah, that's what we're going to have a go with. We're going to start off by changing the engine. The NASCAR engine is going to be used in here. It is uh, slightly more powerful than the standard option. So, that is what we are going to go for. It's a fraction heavier than the standard engine. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get more power out of it. So, that is what we shall use. For the aero, naturally, we are going to be wanting this. Hopefully, we will get a half-decent uh, grippy car out of this one. Certainly, uh, the, the CTSV, I remember being a very, very good car. Uh, certainly for, for grip and so on, for what it was as well. I am hoping when we're done with this, it uh, yeah, will be equally impressive. 275s on the front, pretty good going. Are we going to have some, yep, <laughs> nice massive rear tyres? Three, four. That's sort of, there's only a couple of uh, upgrade options, but they are massive options. So, yes, we will go for some nice three, four, five rear tyres. The probably uh, his biggest concern with this car, kind of holding it back as far as lap times go, is going to be well, weight. As you can see, four thousand pounds at the moment. Uh, we'll take off whatever weight that we can, and of course, we have got the big race weight reduction to come. However, it's still not likely to well, make it massively light. As uh, yeah, that's probably going to be the biggest thing holding it back. On the plus side, the cars that do tend to be a little bit heavier can be quite nice and controllable. They can have that little bit more stability, which can be nice when it comes to the bumps and the demands of our track. We're down to just under £4,000 now. Get uh, all of these parts installed. Of course, we are going to have the roll cage in. We want that handling, uh, and that is going to throw some more weight on the car. Only £116, and for a large car like this, that's actually pretty good going. Okay, weight reduction. Please make it nice and light. It is 3,300. Mm, yeah, I'd kind of like a thousand pounds taken out of it, really. But, well, that's what we're going to have to work with here. Yeah, it's probably going to be a, a little bit on the, the heavier end of the, uh, the spectrum here. And for power, we will remove the restrictors, get the engine up to 994 horsepower, almost 800 torque. Uh, it does save a fraction bit of weight. So... Plenty of power, some nice big tyres. I think this could be pretty quick. I don't think it's quite going to challenge the very top of the table quick, but it could do relatively, relatively well. Chess might be a little sluggish through some of the slower corners. Of course, to test out the Cadillac, we have come to the Virginia International Raceway, where it will have five laps around the Patriot alternate layout in an attempt to go as fast as possible. Our current leader is the Toyota NASCAR with a 107.0. And that is, well, a really rather quick time, and one that uh, I don't quite expect the Cadillac to be getting up to after all. The... Uh, the Toyota was, well, a class above this CTS-V. However, I'm hoping that this will go respectably fast around here. Let's try and get the car. Oh, God, well, we don't go particularly um, well into that uh, first quarter. We have to break a lot earlier, I suspect, down there. How are we doing traction-wise? Oh, God, the understeer here is... Um, yeah, that's quite noticeable. It's quite noticeable through that section. They're going to have to definitely... Oh, God, the understeer is a lot in this car. That, that's not quite what I was expecting from you, Cadillac. I will be honest. That is a, quite a lot of... God, it really doesn't get turned into these corners very well. To try to think, what was the last car that I had? Well, I had the Mini going around here last time, and that was, well, all sorts of different crazy. Um... I don't, I don't know if I'm driving or if I'm driving silly and trying to carry too much speed into these corners or whether it just has got a mile of understeer coming up here. Right, you slow down for this one here and then we're... Okay, we're not too bad. I'm trying to get on the power. <laughs> and we're just starting to skate towards the outside of the track. Hmm. 
Okay, it's a little bit of a pain in the arse to get the front end turned into these corners. How do we do on power delivery? Pretty well in here, actually, once we've got it sorted out of that uh, final corner. We're now flat out. No problems across the bumps up here, as we would expect. 174 miles an hour, and we jump on the brakes. It will get stopped into this first corner at the usual braking point, which is nice. Now, try and get the car oh, turned through here. It's really not a massive fan of it. We are doing better now. I'm kind of knowing what to expect with this vehicle. I wouldn't expect it to be one of the cars to roll if we do happen to clip that curb on the uh, on the inside there. Sort of going to be uh, going out that way too much, but just in case we kind of brush that part of the track. Yeah, I wouldn't be worried about this car falling over. We are much better, ooh, I say that, this time around. We start again. <laughs> it's very easy to get this car sort of inadvertently sliding when you don't want it to particularly. That was again better through that section of track. We've got some humongous gear ratios. I'm far too late on the brakes down there. Hmm. I think perhaps a combination of the car not quite being as amazing sort of under brakes and, and turning as I'm expecting and being relatively fast accelerating because I can put the power down quite nicely. I think that combination might be tricking me a little bit with with this vehicle. A 16.4. Well, it's beaten the Mini and that was with me going exploring on the final corner. So, <laughs> there we go. I mean, I guess that's something at least. Oh, slow down for this uh, first turn. I'm not quite sure why I'm being uh, caught. Oh, God. No, no, please turn Cadillac. Please turn Cadillac. I'm not 100% sure what, quite what it is that's catching me out about this uh, about this car. I think we can probably get some a uh, half-decent half decent lap time. Oh, puddle. Puddle is dangerous over that part. That puddle on the inside is also dangerous as well. Oh, now we're going to start drifting out wide. We may have got the sign. Oh, we didn't quite get the sign. Can't carry. <sighs> can carry the speed, but you cannot afford to be even ever so slightly out of shape. I think that's the, the thing with this car. I think I've just figured it out around there. Stuff that you can get away with in other cars, you can't in this. If you are absolutely spot on, it's great. If you're a little bit out, you're in a lot of trouble with the uh, CTS-V. Oh, no, please stop. Please stop and then turn and then maybe, maybe turn. Maybe, maybe, maybe turn just about around. <laughs> <laughs> final corner. It's not quite what I was expecting from the car. I will be honest here, it's really not quite what I was expecting. Gear ratios are very, very long, and that does help reduce the uh, the wheel spin when you've got those longer gears as this. Okay, we have got a couple more laps to hopefully go faster. If we can not fall off the road, I think the trick with this is perhaps be a little bit more patient with the car. Oh, I'm probably getting on the throttle just a little bit too soon, and that uh, just gives it a bit of understeer at the inopportune moment. Yeah, we're absolutely fine running across that uh, particular curve. Now, be patient down here. Don't try and carry too much speed. That does seem to have done the uh, done the trick. Probably don't want first gear. This car is too likely to spin the wheels up, even in second. We're fighting it a little bit down here, but uh, that's uh, all working for me. Again, get it slow down for the next turn. Run, we can get away with running across the curves there. Fortunately, they're not too, it's not too vicious a curb, unlike the Brands Hatch curbs that uh, that we used to have. We put a wheel on the curb and the car's probably going to spin. Yeah, those, that curve's not too bad. The one on the final corner on the outside there, that is quite a nasty curb. So I don't particularly like running across it unless I really have to. That's more like it. One ten. 0.4 from the Cadillac, please. Boy, that is a lap time. Now the question is, can we get it any faster this time around? <laughs> Already we are going almost, almost sideways in towards that uh, first quarter. This track is a nasty, a very nasty circuit, and cars like this are perhaps not quite ideally suited. I think it may be a tad too heavy and just can't quite... Can't quite maintain the speed in the same way that uh, some of the other cars have done. There we go. Uh, get it neatly, try at least, and get it neatly on its way up here. Now, get the power on, but don't spin the wheels out of this. This is probably one of the trickier corners, actually, for putting the power down. It's just got a long turn with a lot of standing water around the place. That uh, you don't really want to end up in. Oh, again, pushing it right on the limit. We got it across the kerb. I think oh, it's gone up there. <laughs> Ah, typical when I say that curve, the one time I say that curve's actually been relatively nice and then I spin it with the ditching the wheels onto it, I was down on time anyway on that final lap. I think the fourth lap was uh, 
was a pretty good one. Oh, I was just pushing the car too much, trying to uh, to extract some time out of it. Yeah, not quite what I was expecting. I didn't quite really know what to expect in some ways from the uh, the CTSV. It's a little bit of a, an odd one. You really can't afford to make any mistakes. It's not a spectacular accident that you have with the car. Well, I guess it kind of depends on, on what area you've, you've messed up on, but it's not sort of the horrible twitchy throw you in a wall kind of a thing. But if you get things wrong at a corner, uh, even if it's not that particular corner, you crash on, it kind of snowballs, and uh, at some point you will be on the grass. There's a very fine line with this car. If you can get on that line, it's actually a pretty nice vehicle. It's uh, a, very, a very nice vehicle to drive when you can sit it neatly on that uh, that limit. Anything else, though, and then it gets a bit of a pain, a bit understeery and a little bit uncooperative. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all right once you've got everything uh, everything working. Its lap time is a relatively impressive one. The one ten point four will put it into sixth place. It goes faster than the Charger Hellcat. I'm surprised by that. The Charger certainly felt a bit nicer to drive, a bit more consistent in many ways than this Cadillac. It is a fraction down on the Porsche 550 Spider, a fair way down on the Bentley Continental, Hot Wheels Mustang, and so on. But uh, yeah, beating that Charger is doing very well. The Hellcat was a lovely car to drive around here. Beats the Honda S2000, the BMW X6M. So yeah, when you get things right with the car, Pretty damn fast. When you get things wrong, though, you certainly know about it. Now, though, it is time to see how the CTSV will fare in a straight line. So that, of course, means a trip to Le Mans. Now, as far as this Cadillac goes, it's not really going to be challenging the very top of the leaderboard. It doesn't have the power or the aerodynamics to be be challenging the Jaguar D-Type and so on. However, 240-ish miles an hour may well be doable with this car. It has got a fair amount of power, certainly, at 231, it uh, reckons, with the current kind of bits and pieces. So we will remove the arrow and have a look what we can do with the gear ratios. I'm not sure if we might actually want to shorten them a little bit to uh, try and get it up to its speed quicker. Um, okay, 237 does kind of look like about what we're going to get out of this car, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we probably can get it sort of 237 around about here yeah <laughs> it really is it's 237 that's i wasn't far off with my guess then let's see if we can actually reach it in time down the down the Le Mans straight of course this is the the longest straight that uh, i can take the cars to but even so it is not limitless and Cars like this can struggle a little bit to really get up to the, to the, the top speeds. It's um, a little bit heavier, a little bit slower accelerating perhaps than some other cars. Uh, but of course it has still got very, very good power figures. We shall see what, uh, what we can do with the vehicle. I doubt we're quite going to be hitting the uh, the aero limit of the car. We've seen it with a few vehicles. Oh, it's uh, a little bit different to drive in the dry. Okay. Again, balance is a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting. Oh God, it's actually quite, quite peculiar in some way. <laughs> I don't know about this car. Um, yeah, I've got completely distracted. Um, we have had a few cars that have just, they, they can't cut through the air any better. They kind of run out of power to keep accelerating. I doubt that is going to be a problem with this. I suspect we're just not quite going to have enough straights to get it up to the 237. We shall see though with the Cadillac as we round the bend at 180 miles an hour. It is a peculiar one to drive this. I was not expecting it to be so kind of oversteery, slidey and slightly snappy on the run through those uh, opening corners. It's not quite like that in the... I mean, everything's oversteery in the wet, but uh, hmm, okay. Right. Speed! Anyway, we're up to uh, 230 miles an hour, and we are gradually picking up the uh, the miles an hour. I have no doubt it could do 237 with a long enough straight. It is going to get 234. Can we get another one out of you? No, we cannot, but we are lovely and composed, if a little twitchy. The, the bumps didn't cause too many problems through there, but... Uh, yeah, we've got just a, a little tiny twitch. The back end perhaps a, a smidge looser than I would like. And we can bring it to a stop without ending up in the gravel trap. That's always good. Um, yeah, I think we just run out of... We run out of straight, really, to keep accelerating the car. 
It's, it's, it's not bad. 234 miles an hour is not bad in a straight line. It does handle differently to how I was kind of expecting it at times a little bit. Um, a little bit unpredictable, but there you go. You never quite know what I'm going to end up when I build these cars up. So, yeah, probably not my favourite of the vehicles. When you get things right, it is quick, but uh, yeah, a little too unpredictable for my personal liking. It's straight line speed, 234 miles an hour. We'll put the car into joint 19th place with the Lancia Stratos. A mile an hour down on that Charger Hellcat is pretty much shadowing the Hellcat. Through uh, through this one, yeah, mile an hour down on the Hellcat, the Honda S2000. However, it does beat the Hot Wheels Mustang, Lotus Elan, beats the Challenger Hellcat uh, for straight line speed. It's very much kind of a mid-table car. This one, uh, yeah, did relatively well around the circuit, but a, a little a little too unpredictable. But uh, there we go. Well, I've used a CTSV in the video, and I've finally driven the the, the coupe. I'm pretty sure it is the first time I've had this in either. Six or or four or five, come to think of it, um, yeah, it's a, a bit different and uh, a bit of a, an underused car. Perhaps this is why. Perhaps this is why I don't get used uh, too much. But uh, that is it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.